Thank you for visiting Pastor Wyatt TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWyatt.com. Legend himself, Frankie Vittori. Ciao, Frankie. Tutta posto. Tutta posto, yes, that's well. a good start. <laughs> so you haven't, you, you haven't lost your Italian. Frankie Dettori, legend, world-class jockey, one of the best ever to sit in the saddle, ambassador to the sport of kings. Meet Frankie during his fanfare like never before, only on Pass the Wire TV. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends, horses to watch and favorites to fade, 10 figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner's circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pass the Wire TV. I am here with um, a very, very, very special trainer, Michael Maker, uh, that I am excited to talk to for, for a number of reasons. First off, Mike, thanks for coming on the show. It's Pegasus Week. I know you're busy. Um, you've got a bunch of horses running, as usual. So th thanks for your time. I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, now you're, let, let, let's start with this a little bit. Um, you're, you're one of the many, um, super successful Wayne Lucas protégés, correct? Correct. When did you work for Wayne? How long ago? Uh, started in 93 and, uh, ended in 2003. Um, what, what was that like? Is it, was it as tough as people say working for him being such a perfectionist is it, is that a big part of what's molded your career? Uh, I think it's a combination of things, but yeah, I mean, Wayne, I mean, it's tough, but it's good. I mean, uh, like any other sport, uh, I think you want a tough coach and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, perfect your craft. And, uh, you know, he's like a second father, boss. I mean, just, you know, everything. Can't say enough good things about Wayne. Uh, but also I grew up in a racing family and was exposed to it at a young age and uh, got the bug like everybody else. Really? Um, all right, let's go back a long ways. Horses were far apart, really far apart. Uh, did you know Hanson got the photo? Yes. You did? Yep. Wow. Okay. Pretty, pretty impressive. So you got a keen eye for that wire, I take it. <laughs> most of the time okay um now now here, here's what i'm dying to talk to you about because i can't find anybody else there's a lot of great trainers you're a great trainer okay there there's no no question about that but i can't find anybody um to my memory and and i go back a ways i'm not a kid uh that claims as many horses that wind up competitive in stake races and winning stake races as you do. Okay. Um, but that's not it. You, you do that as well as anybody I think ever in the history of the game, as far as consistently and, and repeatedly accomplishing that, which I think is, is phenomenal. And you do it not only with claims, but with private purchases, with horses that have been transferred to you. And a lot of times, from you know a hall of fame barns you know i mean they just they, 
it's 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 uncanny how you do that. The other thing that you do different and as good as anybody that I've ever seen in the game is you could see one of your horses running a mile and a half on the grass and next time out running seven eighths on the main track and being competitive in, in, in both. Can you talk a little bit about what it is about you and your style that A, enables you to spot these horses or go after these horses and turn them into stake horses and B, the diversification of, of, of how you pick your spots. I mean, you pick amazing spots. Sometimes I'll like be reading the race from them. I'm like, what is he thinking? And bang, they jump up and win. Lucky, I guess. Uh, no, no, I think, no, 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 no. You've been doing it too long. That, 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 no softball answer. You, you've been doing it too long, too consistency for me to buy luck. You might have got lucky once or twice with one or two, <laughs> but you do it all the time, man. Well, in the mile and a half, I think uh, a lot of people are a little afraid because you don't have as many opportunities, and the mile and a half just kind of scares you, and I don't think you need to alter your training as much because the pace is slower, et cetera. And, uh, you know, a lot of horses uh, we claim were, were bred to go the distance that didn't have the opportunity. So I think it looks better on paper than actually me having anything to do with it. I don't know that I'm buying that one either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but okay, I'll, 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 I'll let you get away, get, get away with that. So you do look at, you do look at the bloodlines um, and breeding when you claim horses and, and look for horses that might be bred to go to go in, in in those longer grass races correct either either that or you know a horse been running long and the sprinter or vice versa and just you know trying to switch a something that the horse hadn't had the opportunity to do so you look for maybe a horse that's running at a level or in in, in races that you don't think they might be best suited for i.e sprint to route, route to sprint, turf to dirt, stuff like that. Correct. Okay. Um, that, that, that I can get my arms around. What about um, this, this herpes outbreak at Gulfstream now with the Pegasus coming up? Is that going to be a major impact? Is that a concern? What, what, what's going on with all of that? Uh, as far as I know, it's in barn 21. They have that uh, fenced off. And I think it uh, you know, affects the horses in barn 21 as far as racing. Uh, for how long, I'm not sure. But um, anyway, um, to my knowledge, I don't think anybody is affected by it. Okay. But as far as the restrictions uh, shipping out either. All right. Um, now, you've got two horses on the AEs um, for, for, for the Pegasus, uh, but they're also entered in other races on the card. Um, King, King Cause and Endorsed. Uh, are we thinking they may get in or are we, or, or are we really looking at the other races? Uh, probably the other races. Uh, I don't believe either one of them will get in, uh, you know, endorse ran well here last year, though it was a shorter field. And then uh, King cause, uh, you know, kind of up against it, but uh, you know, and then if he does get in, he's got a terrible post. So. Right. Uh, most likely leaning the other way. You know, endorsed is a horse that to me, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you see, see it the same way, but I know you've run him in a lot of different spots. Um, you, you, you've changed things up, up with him, and, and, and he always looks to me, okay, and, and, I, and I could say this for maybe two years now, he looks like he's sitting on a huge race against top competition and like someday he's going to throw it, and, I, I, and, and he's never really done it and he just always still has that look to me like you know that horse has a huge race in him that he's going to throw someday against really good horses and i'm just curious if you kind of look at him the, 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 the same way and are trying to figure him out or or, or or continuing to give him that chance to jump up and surprise everybody maybe not you but surprise a lot of people someday uh i do uh you know, honestly speaking, he's probably better seven eighths to a one turn mile. Uh, you know, he run, he does, I think, have an affinity for the Gulfstream track. He ran well here last year, but, uh, you know, mile and eight is probably not his best go. Okay. Um, 
value engineering, Red Knight are two horses that, um, you know, like I alluded to before, uh, uh, you, you know, you took over the training from, you know, top, top notch outfits, horses perform excellent right away. Um, it just seems you just have a knack for, for, for spotting horses that are just not performing to their potential and, and, and just getting, getting that little ex, extra added. And, um, would you say it's, 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 it, it's spotting them that, that, that probably makes you so successful at that consistently? I think that I'm not afraid to take a chance. I mean, value engineering was, you know, I thought, uh, you know, he sold in Keeneland in November and I think Michael Hoy got him for 35,000, which was hard for me to believe, but, um, uh, you know, nice horseback class and, you know, Michael Hoy gets the horses for the idea of stretching them out and, uh, was got a quick return on his investment. Right. Um, yeah, no. And red Knight too, is another one that kind of, uh, came, you know, just kind of, kind of improved. How's a tone doing coming into his race off a of layoff? Tone's doing very good. Got a little freshening as you see off his last effort, but, um, uh, you know, expect a big effort through well. All right. Um, are you are you the kind of trainer who's reluctant to go into a big race fresh like that? Would you rather have a race? Um, are you are are you comfortable training them into a big race or off the layoff? Or is that just a silly question because it's a horse to horse situation and you know each one is different? Well, it's horse to horse situation, but Tone had a hard campaign last year and um uh, you know, he puts a lot into training, so I'm not worried about it at all. It's not like he had a huge layoff. Okay. What's your thoughts on the um, synth synthetic track over there at Gulfstream? Are you, are you a fan of it? Not a fan of it? it just depends how they run. <laughs> Some <laughs> days I'm a fan, other days I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, uh, it's, it's, I think statistically speaking, I've, I've had a lot of luck uh, with the grass horses running on the synthetic. So uh, I like it. Okay, that, that, that was going to be my next question. Like, what, what, what should somebody like myself, a student of the game, a fan, people look for um, when horses go over to the synthetic track? Is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is that, that adage true that, you know, grass horses tend to like it better than dirt horses do? I think most of the time, I mean, when they started out, we had it at Turfway and Keeneland. Uh, as you know, I trained for Mr. Rams. We had a lot of offspring, a kid and joy, and they, they handled it just fine. So, but, you know, every, every now and again, you get that horse that you think is going to handle it and stubs its toe. So it is a little more difficult. Kit, kittens joys. I always felt ran on anything for some reason. I always, I yeah. just, you know, dirt, turf, synthetic. I think whatever we decided to race on, they just always seem to kind of, kind of adapt to it. Um, with, with 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 somebody who's got a career like yourself that participates at every level, I mean, you could see you in a claiming race, you could see you in a grade one Breeders' Cup, Kentucky Derby, doesn't matter where where, where you're a competitive guy on, on on a racetrack. I mean, you're you, you know you're consistently top ten in wins and earnings um, for years and years and years and years and years, and that's just a testament to to the, to the kind of horseman that you are. But given your given a preference, if I asked you, hey, Mike, is it your preference to find um, those those hidden gems that you're so so adept at finding that you know you either buy or or, or, or claim, um, and sometimes they're high price claims. They're not you know cheap claims. Like you'll spend more than the average person will to claim a horse. Are you more comfortable, or do you prefer that, or are you more of a guy that would like to just go to the sales, find a two-year-old, you know what I mean? And just develop them from scratch your way and bring them along your way. Which, which is your preference? Um, actually it's, it, it's both. I do like to claim it. I do like to, and so forth. But, uh, you know, last year, the two-year-olds that we purchased, uh, we had a lot of luck with those and uh you know unlike anybody else that's in the game like the dream of the triple crown races and the breeders cup so um still have that on my bucket list yeah well well we've got the breeders cup we got to get you a kentucky derby um 
there's there's a good shot there's one with your name on it um i i, I would i would like to think that i think you certainly deserve it um i'm curious if you could do it with a horse you claim that that would really um be be, be, be something but uh i guess if you win it you win it like Bill Mott won it in a way that I guess if I was a trainer, I wouldn't want to win it that way by DQ. But if it's the Derby, you'll take it any way you can get it, I would imagine. That's for sure. You know, it's in the it's in the it's in the books, your Derby winning, no matter how you got got those roses. I guess once they're yours, they're yours, right? Um That's right. what uh what 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 are you what are your feelings on a lot of the you you know talk about racing that you know, we're on the decline, we need more fans, we need to b promote the game better, we need to change perception of the game. What, what, you know, from your perspective where, you know, you're in the business, it's your livelihood, you've been around the game your entire life, what's your perspective and your thoughts on what the game needs to do and focus on to either change perception, improve perce perception, grow, um, where, where do you weigh in on all of that stuff? I don't know. I think, I think, uh, handle, you know, was a slight decline last year, but it's been up, but, um, uh, you know, you know, with computers, uh, you know, for instance, us doing this now we're, we're right. talking uh, over phone and sit in person and so forth. And I think, you know, by the time you come out, it's easier to bet online, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, uh, obviously promotion and, and I think with the internet and everything, uh, I think we have bad things happen in every sport. And That's true. Bad things, bad news uh, seems like it's overpowering everything other than the good news and the positive things that we have in racing. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I thought, I thought, you know, the way we carried on our sport through the pandemic a couple of years ago, you know what I mean? And, and, and you know, you know, safely continued racing and caring for our horses and had people working. I don't think we ever really got the right recognition for that. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think anybody really made, made enough of that. And I think that, that, that was a good example. And I think, you know, with all our issues, we've made a lot of progress, made a lot of strides. Um, and that also too, kind of, kind of gets overshadowed by the negativity that just seems to surround our sport for some reason. It, it's tough to get rid of that. It's like, everybody likes the dirty laundry and nobody really wants to talk about the positives in our game. I agree. And I mean, uh, I think here on Saturday, you're going to see a, a great crowd and, uh, tells me that racing is, uh, doing just fine. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. Um, that, that prices of the horses at the sales and through the roof. So that's got to be a positive sign as well. Right. Now you said, you said you'll go either way. So a new perspective owner comes to Mike maker. Okay. And says, Hey, I want to get into the game. Um, I want to invest money. I want to, I want, I want, I want to start claiming horses. You'll talk to that guy and evaluate them as a potential client the same way you would, to somebody who may want to get in on a on a bigger level and say hey i've got a lot more money to invest i want to go to the sales i want to you know look for those quote you know grade one type derby classic breeders cup type horses you'll talk to either one of them as a potential client that's correct yep and just, and that, 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 that's interesting how many heads you got right now 150 and 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 mo most of them are at gulfstream where else are you uh, Gulfstream, Palmettos, Turfway, Trackside, a handful in uh, Belmont and uh, Oakland. Wow! So you get wow. So how tough is it to 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 manage um, all, 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 all of those horses? And I know you're a little bit like Steve Asmussen, like that. And I I spoke to Steve at the Breeders' Cup, and I said, "Listen, I got to ask you, how do you keep track of all of these horses all over the place? I can't even keep track of breakfast." And uh, I, I don't, I, I, I mean, I don't know how you guys do it, you know. Um, one, it starts with, uh, you know, I have a great staff, and uh, you know, we have a long working relationship for years. Uh, we've got Nolan Ramsey here at Gulfstream, Lazar Guerrero, which uh, I worked with when I was with Wayne, and have his cousin in New York, Nelson, which is uh, our relationships over thirty years, and then Turfway, I have Patrick White, who. Uh, 
I've known since I was a kid in Detroit. So, uh, you know, just good people. So you grew up in Detroit. That's correct. And, 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 and you were involved in racing in Detroit. Yes. What was the track back there? Hazel or something? Or? Hazel park and uh, right. Detroit race course. Wow. Well, Detroit race course is long gone. I would imagine. Yeah. I think it was 96 when they tore it down. All right. Um, again, just a, a, a fascinating style, very, very, very unique trainer. I don't know um, if you realize it, but the, the diversification of you know how you run your barn really, really fascinates me. Are you aware of that? Do you ever like look at yourself next to other trainers and say, you know, say what you want about me, but I, I, I Frank Sinatra wrote that song about me, my way. I mean, you, you really <laughs> do things like, like your way, you know what I mean? Like you run anywhere, it's up, down, moving them around. I mean, it's, 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 it's fascinating to me as a student of the game. Uh, not really. Uh, you know, you always look at Todd and see what a deep bench he has. And the same with uh, Ask Mewson and, uh, you know, just admiring how Wayne, Wayne was in his heyday. And, you know, that's, it's, it's incredible. Are there, are there things, and I won't ask you what they are, because I believe, I believe that the game needs transparency okay to some degree but it's also a very competitive game the claiming game even the stakes game like i know if i was a trainer okay and there were certain you know techniques that i did or ways that i trained horses that i thought could get them to peak or get more speed into them and that's not something i would want to share publicly so that's not something i would ever ask somebody in an interview because i think that's you, you, you know quote, lack of a better term, proprietary. That's, you know, really your business to share with only those who you want. So I would never ask a question like that. But I'll ask you this. Are there things that you learned from Wayne way back then? And I won't ask you what that, that you still implement today or that you kind of put your little touch on, but they kind of stem from things you learned from Wayne back then being, you know, him the legend that he was? Yeah, I mean, Wayne had unbelievable organizational skills, uh, you know, dealing with the people, dealing with people. And, you know, Wayne's theory was easy. Give them the best of everything and they're going to give you the best. And, uh, you know, we try to do that. When when you claim and and, and this if, if 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 this breaches that what I don't want to talk about thing, just say shut up, John, move on to the next question. But when you claim, OK, because I don't want to disparage anybody, but but. Do you ever, and when I had horses years ago with, with Peter Walter, okay, back in the, the early 90s, just a couple of cheap, cheap claimers. And one of the things that I used to look for when we would go to, the, you know, to claim horses, I would look for, for outfits that I didn't think were doing what you just said, doing the best of everything, giving the best of everything. I would look for outfits I thought were maybe cutting corners or maybe just kind of going through the motions and claim from them. And I found it easier for us to improve horses that we took from barns that quote fell into that category. Any validity to that? Do you look at that at all when you when when you claim and consider who you're claiming from, or do you just look at the the horse individually? I really not necessarily. I treat it as a pretty girl when you see it. To me, when you, when I see a horse, you know that's what you want. That's what you like, and uh, you know as far as that goes. Uh, you never know what horse adapts to somebody's program, whether uh, or like what you talk about or, uh, you know, from a, a top notch guy. I mean, I more or less look at it as, uh, you know, you're spending $10,000 on this horse. How am I going to get that $10,000 back if, uh, you know, if he loses today, if I think he's going to lose today, then you got that extra condition and so forth. And, you know, some times on the pri higher price horses, I just look. You know, there's not a whole lot of difference between them and uh, running in lower level stakes or, you know, stakes at uh, different racetracks. Really interesting. Um, is the fact that there are so many stakes and, 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 and lower level stakes, I mean, is that, is that part of your, 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 your game plan to take advantage of those you know, stakes all over the country and realize that there's so many spots that sometimes people are reluctant to run in because, oh, I got a high price claimer. I'm going to keep them there as opposed to running in a stake. And sometimes you wind up 
with those high price claimers in races where they're really not competing against horses that are all that much better or faster than the ones in the high price claimers. And yet you're Correct. getting back higher. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Um, Summer Assault. Let, t t tell me a little bit about Summer Assault. That's a recent maker claim. Yeah, no, uh, you know, just an old classy veteran that, uh, you know, he falls into that category. Uh, just, uh, you know, very cool horse, uh, one of the barn favorites. And, uh, you know, even in the papers when we claimed him, the previous owner said, if the horse ever needs a home, call us up. And, uh, That's always nice to hear. Yeah. yeah. That's always, always nice to hear. Well, Mike, you got a big weekend coming up. I appreciate your time. Um, best of luck Saturday. You've got a bunch running Temple Value Engineering. Right? I mean, just a bunch running. Um, all the best. I hope you get, 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 get a couple of wins on Saturday. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for being open and, and, and answering the questions, even though you softballed me a little, a little bit in the beginning <laughs> with, with some of that stuff, but that's all right, man. Um, all the best to you, Mike. I appreciate you coming on past the Wyatt TV. Have a great Pegasus weekend. I'll be there. I'll say hello if I see you and uh, ciao for now, buddy. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Dan here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator exclusively on DRF Bets. History remembers moments of extraordinary strength, skill, and determination. True greatness is forged by those who fulfill their destiny. Nobody does it better.